It wasn't supposed to snow today, and yet I think we've gotten, well, at least six to eight inches. Forgive me for not being exactly steady. I'm trying to walk through the thick snow. We're heading out to the greenhouse today, and we're going to make a couple videos I wanted to get done, but I've got to get there. And I thought I'd take you along for the jaunt, so to speak, since no one shoveled, including me, to get out here to my humble little greenhouse. And we'll get inside where at least it's not snowing on us and start yapping. Hey garden friends, welcome back to the greenhouse. And as you can tell, if you can see my breath, it's pretty cold in here, it's snowing out. We have six to eight inches of fresh snow. We're supposed to get another six inches tomorrow. So we're getting some January snow after lots and lots of rain. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I just noticed where a hole punched through in my greenhouse over there. Hopefully, uh, well, I'll punch it back through in a minute. I wanted to make a video today on how you can save money and still have a beautiful garden. You don't have to go out and buy fancy plants or a certain brand of plants to have a beautiful garden. There's a lot of ways to grow a beautiful garden and yet not have to spend a lot of money. Now, one way to get started, and I've done videos on, and I will put them up here and in the description box below, uh, a link to them, how to start seeds. Now, you can buy seeds online. I have a lot of sources that I enjoy buying from because of particular varieties I want to grow. But I have had fantastic success with growing seeds that you find at the dollar store. In fact, I grew all of my oriental poppies from dollar store seeds and they were just gorgeous. So that is an option. In fact, I think I bought two packets of seeds for, for a dollar. So that's 50 cents each. So right there, great savings. Um, and you know, they Sorry, it's, they're very generous with the seeds, so you don't even have to use them all. So you could buy a, a particular br uh, type of plant, like I did the poppies, and swap with someone else who maybe bought delphiniums or daisies or something else, because you're not gonna usually use every one of the seeds in the packet that they give. Um, you can, you can um, increase your success by planting more seeds, and I do recommend that. Plant a lot of seeds to uh, make sure that you succeed with that. Now I'm gonna go off a little checklist I have here because I forget about things. Um, another th way you can get seeds is to look up a local gardening club. A lot of times they will have seed swaps or they're giving away their extras. And that's a great way to get um, seeds at, on, a, on a very cheap budget or low budget. So you can start seeds indoors. I have winter sown seeds, that's super simple. Um, you use recycled containers. Right now, this year, I'm using these water jugs. I'm getting at the dollar store. It's distilled water for my humidifier. And each time I empty one, I poke holes in the bottom. I do this with a hot, like old hot steak knife I've heated and I just poke holes. And then um, I cut a slot and cut around and leave a hinge for to make containers. And I've got several started already. I was going to start some more seeds in this. Um, in fact, I was, the seeds I was going to start, I just came in here and mice have gotten in here and eaten them. I had a whole collection of milkweed weed seeds and they're all gone. I didn't know the mice would eat them. So lesson learned. I will have to order or buy another milkweed plant this year and then collect next year and keep them safer in an area. So um, starting seeds, number one way or one of the ways, the first one listed of how to save money and grow a beautiful garden. You can grow, you grow vegetables. There's dollar store has vegetable seeds. There's the many mainstream varieties that grow very well for home gardeners are available also at the dollar store. And they're very, very simple to start. So you don't want to start from seeds. Okay, great. That's fine. At the garden centers come spring when all the seeds or all the little plants are out there for sale 
and they have been quite, quite expensive recently, but you can buy, buy six packs, like of uh, tomatoes. Six pack of tomatoes, it, it might run $5, but you're not gonna want maybe six tomato plants of that variety. So what you would do is, again, find a gardening friend. She could buy, or they could buy a different variety or a different plant, maybe they want peppers, and you could swap, give her two tomatoes and you take two of her peppers. So sharing that way can help cut the cost. Or maybe she already has a tomato plant growing and you want some. You can actually take cuttings and start tomato plants from cuttings. And I have a video and I think I have a blog post too on how to start cuttings or tomatoes from cuttings. You can do this with basil plants. You could, well, you could do this with a wide variety of plants. And I will try to list all of the blog posts, et cetera, I have on starting plants from cuttings. And um, you can see how far you can go with that. But it's a super easy way to get free plants and or cheap plants if you're uh, buying one plant and dividing it or taking cuttings from it or, or um, sharing with a friend. So I, I just wanted to say that um, many times there's a lot of things that are marketed, certain plants, and they are proclaimed to be superior to maybe another type of that same plant. And really that's more marketing than it is reality. So yeah, the up and coming, the new hybrids and whatever, they don't always do better than the tried and trues. So don't think you have to have a particular brand of plant or name of a plant to get a, a gorgeous one of that variety, like uh, in Nepeta or in um, hydrangeas or whatever. There is, if you shop it extensively, you will find something very similar at a much lower cost and do great. Or you could start some hydrangeas, you can start from cuttings. So um, if you have a friend who has a beautiful hydrangea that, especially if it's localized, because um, you wanna find things that you know will thrive in your area. So if you find a neighbor who has a particular plant that you think is just gorgeous and it grows well for her, it very well would do great in your garden too. And part of the cost savings is gar in gardening is buying, buying or getting plants that already you know thrive in your area. So if you try to plant a plant that isn't going to do well in your area, it's just gonna be a struggle with time, effort, maybe money and fertilizers or whatever else you think you need to, to help that plant thrive. So. Get plants that you know thrive in your area, and I would highly recommend finding natives to your area. Alrighty, let me go on to next. Okay, I already touched on propagating existing plants. Um, I have a whole thing on either shrubs, all kinds of annuals, uh, perennials that you can propagate from cuttings. I have one on petunias. Um, on boxwoods, boxwoods like to make a hedge. Um, and a lot of other things too. I will put those in the description box below for you. So, you know, when I first started a garden, I was newly married. We had a very, very tight budget. In fact, I'd say I had no budget for a garden. Um, I did get to know the local, the members of the local gardening club, and they were so generous with divisions, uh, cuttings, showing me how to do it and their seedlings, et cetera, that I grew an entire garden, food for my family, with almost no outlay of money. So don't think, again, that it's gonna have to take a lot of money to get a beautiful and productive garden. It does, sometimes it takes innovation, it does take work, it does take work, um, but if you're willing to put in the work and the time, then you don't have to put out a lot of money. So another way, um, you know, a lot of things that are often promoted is buying a lot of garden amendments. And I'm talking about buying potting soil, buying fertilizers, buying compost, by, you know, those things, you can make your own compost. Um, chicken, not chicken scraps, kitchen vegetable scraps, your coffee grounds, um, cuttings from your plants, the lawn mowing clippings, 
etc. You can put them in a compost bin and I have a whole uh, video to post on how to build your, one of your own that is not only useful but it also is pretty. Yeah, put in the garden, it looks like a, maybe a garden gate or a piece of a fence and you can grow things uh, around it to um, make it a little bit more attractive. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so, and you don't, I've never really, I mean, there's a lot of people who say you have to have a certain formula for your compost. I don't follow any formulas. I put in my kitchen debris. I put in my garden debris. I, my chicken litter from a chicken pen, if you notice, you can't hear them. They're gone. <clears throat> they met their demise via a bobcat. Uh, but I'm going to get more after we've um, secured everything better. But I put a lot of straw in my chicken bin, so I rake it out, and we, um, I would put it into the compost bin. Excuse so I put it, that chicken debris in the compost bin, and since it had that all that straw in it, um, that I would put down as litter for the chickens, as well as I would use rice hulls, alfalfa. Um, I would also use try it, wood chips, all in there that they would scratch around in, peck at, poop on, and it would have made up a, a beautiful addition to my composter. So, and that is very useful to make your own potting soil with, use as a mulch, it feeds the soil. If you feed your soil, you should not need to, to add fertilizers. I have a whole post on regenerating the soil and or building organic garden soil. And then you just avoid all of the bags of comp um, things you have to buy at a garden center to um, fill up or put into your garden. And that is not only cost savings, it's earth friendly. You don't have the plastic. You don't have trucks coming to pick up your garden debris and that in itself is not earth friendly and you know they're trying to do a good thing by composting it but what do the trucks run on you got to get think of that so try to do your own compost also if you don't want a compost bin okay chop and drop meaning go along as you prune back cut back deadhead just let the pieces drop to the ground um, if your plants grow thickly enough, you'll never see it. And or if you don't like it on the ground, they dry up really quickly um, and looks like part of your mulch. You can put some mulch over it, but believe me, after a few days they dry up and they immediately start being incorporated into the soil by the worms, who love you, by the way, by doing the chop and, chop, chop, chop and drop. Okay, next. You know, you could also DIY many of your own garden supports, trellises, uh, obelisks, arbors. Um, I have a few videos and posts on my blog on just how to do that. And I will, um, and you don't have to have a lot of building skills. I don't, I'm just kind of a go and do it. Um, things can be cut at like the gar um, Home Depot Lowe's, they will cut stuff for you. And or if you have, if you can just wield a hammer and or screw gun and nails or whatever, you can do these for yourself. Uh, I have, I have a chop saw that I use too, but you don't have to have one of those. You can have them cut. They do, most of them, I don't know, they used to be a dollar a cut, but still it's a cost savings over buying. Um, ready-made things though you can't I have found some things on sale um, at like Home Depot or Lowe's that I've picked up like I don't know why they were clearing out or some of them are damaged and they still will do the job but you can um, use them in your garden so I uh, one thing I did want to make sure of give up on perfection stop trying to make everything look perfect Enjoy the garden. You know, most people that come to my garden and visit are just overwhelmed with the beauty. And while I can see all the things that need to be done or that are not quite up to par in my mind, they think they don't even see it. So get past seeing things through the lens of criticism of your own work. Just enjoy the garden through each of its seasons and enjoy the process. 
Now, as far as like seeding areas, I love having seeding areas in my garden. Now I've DIY'd things like a couple of logs and a board. Um, I found benches or little garden sets at the thrift store um, or secondhand stores. You can find them on Facebook, um, Facebook Marketplace, uh, like a local one, local classifieds. I've seen them on next door where somebody is just getting rid of, uh, we have a lot of vacation cabins up here, so they might buy a cabin and it has a bunch of stuff and they don't want it. So they put it up there even for free as long as you come get it. So try places like that. Um, would curate your garden and your seating areas. You don't have to go out and buy the fanciest, most expensive things to have a beautiful, relaxing area to enjoy. So, you know, this will take time. And um, I know a lot of people want instant gratification, but that's not always conducive to saving money. And I want you to look past all the marketing you see on YouTube, Instagram, and what have you for certain brands of plants, certain seed companies, certain what have you, um, to think that you need to do those things to have a beautiful, beautiful garden that you enjoy. You really, really don't. And I just wanted to make sure you knew that. And that leads me into my next video. So please join me there when we talk about slow gardening and hopefully the trees will stop dropping the snow. All right, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.